Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jonah from Spotlight, and today we are going to be talking to Terry Rice. Terry, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, yourself? Quite well. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in Minnesota. It's a little warmer, so can't complain. And yeah, super stoked to talk to you, to dive in. I want just to throw out a couple things before we hop into the actual meat of the conversation, but... Uh, if you are just showing up to the Spotlight YouTube channel, please go check out our past events. We did an event like this last week with Kay Putnam all around building your email list. We've also been trying to just provide a lot of actionable tools for you to start building your coaching and course products. And this week we've been talking a whole lot about using services like coaching and uh, consulting as a means to build curriculum. So you're not just sitting in the vacuum when you sit down to build a course. And Terry is someone we've talked to a couple of times in the past. He's done at, at least three events with us. So also go search his name on our channel. Those events are super informative and a lot of them walk you through how to start your services business, whether it's consulting or coaching. So just want to call out that there is a lot more content from Terry on the Spotlight channel if there's anything more you want to know after the event. But um, let's dive in. Terry, first, just for anyone who's here who maybe doesn't know about you, um, would love to hear it from you. Can you give just a little introduction, who you are and kind of what your primary business is? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I'm the father of four children, and they are all here right now because unfortunately <laughs> we have some cases of COVID going through the house. Luckily, everyone's doing well enough, but you will hear them express the fact that they're watching TV and enjoying it. So there's that. <laughs> there um, <you> go. <laughs> but I'm also a business development consultant. And what that normally involves is helping other entrepreneurs build their brand and revenue. That could be your pricing, your positioning, your marketing, your social media content, anything under those, those guidelines. And I'm also a contributor to Entrepreneur Magazine, which is a lot of fun because my goal is to create content that would have helped me five years ago <laughs> when I was mm -hmm. just launching my business and had no clue what I was doing. So if I can help anyone avoid all those challenges, all that you know, second guessing and a lot of the stress and anxiety, that's what I'm here to do. Love it. And so Terry, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to you is in past events and just from your content in general, you're a big proponent of people starting their online business with like coaching or um, consulting, basically taking the knowledge you have and using it to help other people. Um, but not starting right off the bat with courses or all of this. You're also not selling like drop shipping or all of this, right? It's just like you want to get online, you want to sell your services, take the knowledge you know and share it with other people. So can you tell us a little bit about your personal history when you started to take your business online? Um, what did that look like? What was your first move? Kind of what did you see as your big value proposition starting out? And how did you represent that to your customers? Not well, for starters. <laughs> um, so let's just get that out the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The first thirty seconds, you're gonna say, "Why is this guy even on this event?" Because like it was <laughs> just me messing up. So I uh, I left my job at Facebook and I started doing digital marketing consulting. So helping companies, normally uh, e-commerce brands or even local stores, uh, sell through Facebook or through paid ads. But I was good at my job, but not good at building my business whatsoever. Mm. So I just didn't charge enough. I just wanted people to say yes. I had no real onboarding process. I had no real process either how I help people. And mm. I always say clarity is the precursor to confidence, both in yourself and from the prospect's eyes. So I was just messing up. And what I really had to do was just stop doing so much and just start being more present and saying, look, I actually have to work on my business stop working in my business and start working on my business, which is even more embarrassing because I went to business school and, and I didn't <laughs> use any of the best practices um, that, that I learned. So initially I faced like a lot of rejection and you go through an identity crisis to an extent because you're used to having this nine to five job working in corporate and everyone wanting to talk to you, all of a sudden being this nuisance who you're just begging people to respond to your emails. So initially it didn't go well uh, whatsoever, but what mm. I did find that worked was, was this. I was a member of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce, and I saw that they gave all these free events for entrepreneurs and small businesses in the area of Brooklyn. It could be how to get financing for your business, how to find a partner, so on and so forth. So the thing that was very life-changing for me is I reached out and I said, hey, can I do a free event, digital marketing for founders? It'll be mm. really useful. I'll go through these five tactics, so on and so forth. They said yes, and then promoted me to their email list of 
thousands of people in the Brooklyn area. I showed up, there was like 60 people there waiting to hear me talk as opposed to me begging them to respond to my DM. Right. Uh, 10 of them asked me questions afterwards, two of them became clients. And, and that's when I realized to, to grow your business, you have to find the gatekeepers of your audience and then offer to provide some kind of content in exchange for that partnership. And then from there, just don't mess up. So that's what I've been right. replicating for years uh, with other people and, and it just works. That's awesome. So, uh, wow, th you just dropped a lot of knowledge in that one answer. <laughs> I want to call out first, just the clarity is the precursor to confidence that is so valuable just as a as a tool for anyone starting out, whether it's being clear on your your customer's problems or your own mission. I just want to call that out because that just resonated with me right away. Um, and then also, so that's fascinating. So you really, you caught on to something when you figured out that you could start offering to other people's audience your services and all of that. Uh, so right off the bat, I'm curious, you, you recognized, you knew you had something to offer. You started seeing a method for growing your audience, at least at first, but what was the biggest challenge in establishing your own brand, your own consulting business, once you recognize that there was a problem you could solve and an audience you could talk to? Yeah. First of all, I want to grab a question. Uh, yeah. Someone's saying, what is a gatekeeper? So essentially a gatekeeper okay. is the person who has access to your audience. And in this case, the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce is a local organization that entrepreneurs belong to and they give free events. So they had access to my audience. And if I could align with them, I would get that access as well. So that's mm. the that's the overall goal. Uh, the question I forgot already because I'm not going to oh, two part question. No worries, so. no no worries. Basically, <laughs> the, the, once you recognized clearly, you had the clarity that there was problems you could solve, and you figured out a way to like start reaching that audience. What was the biggest challenge in establishing your like authority and your own business to do so? I think we should all aspire to be more like Nickelback. <laughs> and I'll, 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 I'll explain why. Is it going to make sense? Give me, give me another 30 seconds. Oh boy, love it. So if you Google most hated band in the world right now, Nickelback is going to show up. But here's the thing. They're also one of the most successful Canadian bands in history, right? Mm -hmm. So the people that love them really love them. And the moral of the story is don't try to be like everyone else. Don't try to blend in. You want to be polarizing to an extent because that's how you stand out. And how do you do that? It's through your personality. How do you do that? You build your personal brand. So when you're writing content on social media, which is a great way to attract people to your business, even if you still have a nine to five, you want to do so with your own personality and not be so so bland that you're just someone, you know, writing content or saying how to stuff. So on my end, you hear me talk about my family. You hear me talking about going to the gym. You hear me talk about the times when I you know, was just kind of embarrassed when I first started my business. But that's how I built my personal brand. And once you realize that you don't have to blend in or sound like everyone else, especially sounding corporate or professional, whatever that could even means, that's when you really stand out because that's when people start to know you for who you are, not just what you do. And that's mm. how you build your brand. But it took me I, too long, let's say over a year or so to do that. And what helped me come to that point was doing live events like this. Mm. Sometimes there are 300 people, sometimes there are three people. But people would come up to me and say, look, that's cool, you know this stuff, but the reason why I like you is because of X, Y, Z. And the more you hear about that, you'll hear aspects of your personality that they like and, and appreciate and share with others. And you realize it's not just the nuts and bolts being good at your job. It's also making yourself appear like someone they want to align with because you're being honest about who you are. Mm. Oh, man, I love that. I, we had a someone in the comments in uh, last week's event. Um, well, someone was expressing how they're nervous to put themselves out there. And then someone else hopped in and said, your vulnerability is not a weakness, it's an asset. And it sounds like that was part of the process too, is like really recognizing that your personality was a, an asset for your brand. It was, and, and what I wanna do is, I wanna go back and just do some nuts and bolts stuff because everyone here, I appreciate your time, I know it's valuable. It's not the Terry Rice show, it's your show, right? So and by, by you, I don't mean you, Jonah. I mean, I mean yeah. everyone in totally. humans. Yeah. So what I want to do is give you a very easy formula to follow if you want to launch your own professional service business, even if you have a current nine to five. And the benefit of this model is you can do it with no startup costs and you can do it with the skills that you already have. Mm. So what do you do? First of all, you take a personal inventory 
of all the jobs you've had and the associated tasks you've had with those jobs. And you put them in buckets, things that you like, things you didn't like, things that you're good at and like. And more or less, you want to say, what am I good at and what do I like? And then offer that as a service. Hmm. So maybe it's email marketing. You know, you've had several jobs in marketing, which you really love email marketing. Cool. That's your service. Then document the process someone would have to go through to be good at email marketing. Good title, good copy, good whatever. And the first step in this model, it's called the action model, is to offer audits. You're going to say, hey, I've been doing email marketing for X years. I'm going to audit yours over at Spotlight to make sure you're doing a good job. Give me a thousand bucks. That's your audit. You going through that process. What's the next step? Consulting. That's you saying, look, all right, after the audit, looks like there's a few, few things we can tweak here. If you want, I can consult you on best practices over the next two, three weeks for this amount of money. Hmm. That's the C in the model. Next, training. Training, you're getting more in depth. You're like, look, you're actually not that good at writing emails. <laughs> That's the problem. It's not <laughs> cool. Right. It's not that. It's just like, you need help becoming a more modern email marketer. I will train you and your team to do so. That's the T. I, implementation. Look, your email marketing platform is actually bad. I'm going to help you implement another one that's going to be much better based on your needs. That's the I. O is ongoing retainers. Look, every month you can ask me any questions you want about email marketing. I'm here to answer them for this fee. And the N is new opportunities. That's you saying, look, you know, let's find some other ways to work together. Maybe, you know, I'll be a spokesman for your, for your company. I'll get on stages talking about this stuff. Or if you have a podcast, you know, I can help you with the content for that, so on and so forth. So again, it's A-C-T-I-O-N. It's audits, consulting, training, implementation, ongoing retainers, and new opportunities. Pick one, pick them all, do whatever, but do it with the stuff that you already know how to do and you enjoy and you're on your merry way. That is awesome. What And if that's that sounds also like a cyclical tool. So any new business you start or any new venture you start, you can just use that as a model. Oh man, that makes us... That helped me so much just now because you you even identified things that maybe I do a little bit in my business, but not intentionally. And there having that intention makes such a difference. Oh, oh man. So, uh, God, and for everyone watching, come back to the replay. There will be a replay, by the way. It'll be on YouTube at the Spotlight page. But just watch that one snippet again if you do anything after. That is so valuable. Um, I want to... We don't have a whole lot of time here, so I want to get to a couple things um, that really stuck out in past events talking to you. So as you're developing this, you've talked a lot about social listening. When you have questions about your brand or questions about a product, how to craft something. And it's you may have an idea, but how to really craft an idea into a transformational product or experience for your customers. Um, can you talk about in your own words a little bit how you use social listening or researching your market to guide your products or your brand? Yeah, I will. I'm actually going to give an example of a, of a client that I worked with. It's going to be more interesting. Um, I'm kind of boring and basic if you boil it down. Uh, but social listening is the act of going on various social media channels and just learning about your audience based on the content and conversations they have. And one of my clients, I'll call her a friend now, she's a sleep health educator. So you can kind of guess what she does, right? So she'll go on channels like Reddit and go to the subreddit for insomnia and read the comments and questions. Mm. And the benefit of Reddit is you can sort it by top comments for a certain period of time. So you can look for the top comments and conversations and read through those threads. And what she noticed during the early days of COVID is there was a new wave of people experiencing sleep challenges, primarily teachers, because they were teaching remotely in front of a screen, so they're getting more blue light in their face than normal. And they have annoying parents like me emailing them all throughout the day, <laughs> asking them random questions. Yeah. So from there, she got an idea of what their problems were. Like, hey, you know, I can't sleep and, you know, I'm trying this drug, but I'm afraid it's going to make me too tired to teach in the morning, so on and so forth. And realizing that she made a program just for educators, how they can get more sleep during COVID. Mm. And she initially showed that to teachers, then she sold it to schools and then school districts, which is hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's a pretty good deal uh, when you land those. But that's the benefit of social listening is even if you are an expert, she's been doing this 15 years, you can find new use cases or even new audiences for your product or service. So, uh, God, that's so cool. And, and so Reddit is a great place to do that. But ultimately, you have to figure out like where your audience is because it's really easy to waste a lot of time 
on Facebook looking for people in a certain audience that may not be on Facebook. Do you have any tips for people starting out with this kind of research as far as locking down like where your audience might be spending their time, where they might live so that you're not wasting time kind of just cruising a random social media looking for that information? You might spend some time wasting, like just looking right. for it, like, to be honest, because like every right. audience is different. I would say this, if you want a shortcut, one thing you can do is find someone who's a, a thought opinion leader in your industry and has an online uh, community, but they charge for it. Even charging like nine bucks a month will elevate the conversations you're being exposed to because these are people that pay for education and community. So that's one, one shortcut more or less. Find people that are already active and have a have a platform in your industry see where they're where they're they're posting their content it could be facebook it could be you know linkedin so on and so forth but the stuff ain't easy but the thing is years ago this would have cost you tens of thousands of dollars to get this kind of information now you have to sit on your phone for a couple hours and get it you know <laughs> it's right. not fun but right. it's like if it's annoying you or boring you to do research on your target audience you probably shouldn't be in this business because it's like <laughs> Yeah. That's 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 yeah. the foundation for everything you're going to do next. So if you're in such a rush to get to the next step, there's like this kind of scarcity that I'm, I would pick up on or some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of mindset issue. But that's part of it. You know, that's the, the cost you pay for entry into this new life. It's doing this research, this grunt work. Now, eventually what you can do is outsource that because I now right. have a, a service that does that stuff for me and they'll bubble up insights. But initially that's that's part of it. But you want to get to the point where you're bored, where you keep on hearing the same stuff over and over again. Good. That means it's a relevant theme. <laughs> you know, like if you right. do the same thing 20 times, write that down. Right. But that's that's the whole point of doing this this research. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, it may be a little boring at first, but it's a lot more boring to like beat your head time and time again, building products and not knowing who to sell them to. Or yeah. So, oh, I love that. So, it got a it got a bit of a snapshot at where you were once you had like built your services business and some insight into social listening, kind of how you can use that to guide your products. At some point, you decided to start building online courses. Um, clearly, you recognized that the skills you had accrued were valuable and other people could do it in their own business. Uh, when did you build your first online course as far as in your journey and building your business? And what was that process like in, in turning the lessons you had learned into curricula? I would say it's one of those things where when you're in a situation where you like, don't have a lot of opportunities, you get a lot of clarity, right? I would say like lack of opportunities and options gives you a great clarity on what you can do. And in the early days of COVID, I was doing one-on-one -on -one consulting still with entrepreneurs, which was great. But again, I have four kids. So it's like, you can't do that when they're all at home. So what I did is I stopped doing consulting for about two months mm -hmm. and all the content that I would share with someone one-on-one, -on -one, I recorded it. I said, this is a way for me to get time back. Am I gonna take a revenue dip right now? Absolutely, because I'm not working. But once this course comes out, I can scale it to other people. So mm -hmm. that that whole you know challenge and crisis is really what led me to building my first course. And yes, I, you know, I do sell that uh, on a one-off basis, but what I did also was I created a group coaching program. Mm. And the benefit was, I would say, look, everyone gets access to this course. You take the course, I'll be here every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. to answer any questions you have. So now I actually had more clients because they were doing it asynchronously and I was only having two meetings per week <laughs> with all the people. So it worked out better. My revenue actually went up as a result, even though, again, it's during early days of COVID, everything's going nuts. My revenue went up because the content I have helps people make money. And for any entrepreneur who wants to do so, it was a good solution. And, and as far as building curriculum for that first course, whether it's, you know, the cohort or the course itself, uh, what was that process like? Because you had clearly you had proven transformations. You had trained people before you were already as part of your action. You had been implementing all of these lessons. How was your process turning that into a curriculum? It was the same format that we would use in the action model. When mm -hmm. you're making that audit, how would you how would you audit someone's work? Same thing. It's like step one is this, step two is that, step three is that. And I had so many iterations of doing it live with other people. I would say questions create content. 
So whenever someone had a question about my framework, that would become content I put in a course as well. So mm. that's the benefit. And, and that's why I think you, you don't, you should not build a course until you deliver the content live several times. And you can decide what several is, but you get more feedback from the audience when they're like, wait, what's that mean? Or I'm confused or that's boring and that's really useful. And in some cases I've changed the order which I teach things because I'm like, oh, this should come first. For me, I know because I know it, you know, it's my content, but for the audience, they got lost there. So I would not just sit down and start creating a course. I would do it live either one-on-one -on -one or in a workshop format, even if you have to do it for free because you're still getting all this data to make your course better. Right, right. That's so bad. And, and as far as building that, the curriculum for your first course, did you hire any help to do that? Or the first one, did you just build it totally yourself? No, I built it myself and Teachable has some great resources on the website and how to do that. I think the funniest part is me recording it myself because it was me with like this, this camera and I was doing it by myself because, you know, it's like early days of COVID, don't touch me. And to center my camera and to zoom in, I had to put like a, a coat rack there. <laughs> that was like roughly my height and I'd put like a head on it. And I'm like, okay, let me zoom in on it. So I actually have like behind the stage video of me doing that with like me with a stupid coat rack in front of me. <laughs> but when you, but the process of documenting me creating that actually got people on the pre-order list. It was like, what are you building? I'm like, well, here's this thing if you want to buy it. So going back to building a course, I strongly suggest doing some kind of pre-sale where you offer some kind of discount in order for people to make a purchase earlier. But that pre-sale was useful because I'm there, I'm at this, this studio by myself recording. My wife is watching all the kids. It's, it, it's, it's tough, right? But when you would see those orders coming in, like while you're walking to the office, while you're working back, you're like, okay, this, people want this stuff. There's a purpose in, in this struggle right now and it will be worth it and, and it did pay off. So that's another benefit of the, the pre-sale is you get this motivation to keep on going because it, you, you've already proven your concept to some people. Right, and so you were already offering a pre-sale while building the course itself. Yeah. And I, I say like, Hey, I'm still building it. I wasn't like, you know, right. trying to, trying to right, hide right, right. everything. Right. But, um, but yeah, I was, I was selling it as I was building it. And that was beneficial because I would say, what do you want to see in it? You know, well, you've already invested money. Can I make some tweaks, you know, while I'm, while I'm still recording? Yeah. And, and so I'm sure there's a few, but if you can lock down, you know, just cause we all, every time we go on our first endeavor, we make mistakes, but like if you could lock down, the biggest mistake you made building your first course that you could pass on to people building their first course? Forgetting to plug my microphone in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Several times. Um, oh, that's so real. Yeah. I would say that was yep. one of them. I would also say it's this. Um, I think, and this is just me being completely honest, right? I think I made it too long. Mm. too long because I tried to like vomit seven years worth of information into one course and it would probably take you about a month to get through it but sometimes you're like look I just want to you know get started so if I could do it over again I would have taken away some of the content and maybe offer that as like you know on the side or whatever but you want to make sure people can actually complete the course because people recommend courses that they enjoy and complete not courses they got a discount on Right. So right. you want to make sure that you're setting up people to get through it. And what I did later is I started adding prompts like, hey, you're almost there. <laughs> just do this. I know it's tough. And that increased the completion rate. But yeah, I mean, I think it was just too long. So everyone says go narrow, but I'm an educator. Like I teach at NYU in General Assembly. So I'm like, no, you need all this stuff. Maybe you do, but not right now. <laughs> that could have been a follow, of course. So you might have broken it up into multiple courses if you. Correct. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. One of my favorite parts about building online courses or just embarking on that journey is having to get feedback and and work that in, and not just like opening the space for it, but actually having to listen and incorporate it. I'm curious, Ed, how has like one? How do I want to put this? Now that you have online courses and you have a community, you have your own focus group to like do social listening with within your own ecosystem how has that affected like your products since building a course how is how do you continue to integrate those the feedback and the learning what does that process look like one thing i didn't account for was how challenging it is for some people to create content mm. in the course i'm like yeah post content here's some themes to use next chapter right <laughs> so right. now 
I have standalone content where I'll teach people how to create content based on various themes, what they're interested in, and even different mediums. Because for me, my focus is on helping people do inbound marketing, not outbound. And to do that, you need to have a lot of content. And right. if you're not comfortable with one form of content, there's other options that I didn't explore as much as I, as I could have. And even giving people just like the tactics to go deeper into how to create content. So that's what I do separately now. But for my model to work, you want to be attracting people because I don't like begging people to talk to you. It, right. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not comfortable. You lose all leverage, so on and so forth. And I think that's why some people don't start a company because they don't want to seem desperate or salesy. But with my model and my process that I have now, you don't have to because you're attracting leads to you. And so if you can expand on that just a little more, you're attracting leads to you by putting yourself out there by through the content, right? That's the the attracting force. Pretty much. It's just saying smart sound and stuff on social. I mean, if I could distill <laughs> right, it down to right, that. Right. Um, but to get more granular, it's also having what's called a lead magnet. So some kind of PDF or guide they can download to get on your email list. Uh, but then outside of that, it's also getting speaking engagements. So if you feel comfortable speaking in public, especially now, because right now I'm like on my computer in my, my office, right? It makes it so much easier because now Teachable and Spotlight are the ones that ask you all to come here and I appreciate your yep. time. But all I have to do is show up and not sound silly, you know? So I don't know. You tell me how I'm doing in the comments, right? Um, <laughs> but if you can form those partnerships, then again, you just have this inbound marketing engine going for you and you don't have to try so hard because people are saying, I heard you speak on this event. I want to learn more about creating content. I want to learn more about my pricing. I want to learn more about you know getting speaking opportunities. How can you help me? As opposed to me DMing you saying, hey, Jonah, I, I really checked out your profile. It looks really interesting. By the way, do you have five minutes for coffee? Like no one wants to do that, right? right. So, so yeah, that's the benefit of doing it. Yeah. And so it, uh, I want to ask just like one more follow-up question just about like course building itself. Um, when it comes to like building, because it... I love what you said about making the course too long. It's easy to sit down and just think, I want to teach everything I know about everything to everyone. What is your like number one advice in in how you how do you narrow that down? If you're sitting there with this wealth of knowledge, how do you know what's going to be impactful or what's going to be a course someone will or can finish? You have to be okay with 80%. 80%. Like you could say, look, I can get them to 100, but you have to be okay with 80% because just that 80 is going to be 100 to them. Mm. But if you bog people down with the details and slow it down and more content, because to get from 80 to 100, it's not incremental, the amount of time spent. It's a lot. It goes, it goes deeper. You know, it's, it's, much, it's, it's much more involved. But if you don't give people that win, we're like, okay, at least I feel comfortable doing this stuff and releasing it to the public because you're so focused on that last 20%. It ain't going to work. So it should actually hurt a little bit that you're leaving mm. some content out. Be like, oh, man, I wish. Hey, if you wish, cool, write a blog about it. And at the end of the blog, say, if you want to learn more about this stuff, buy my course. Now it's lead gen. But it, it should hurt a little bit. It's, it's like editing film or any kind of video. The cutting room floor, gosh, that's tough. There's so much stuff that gets left out because of time constraints. You have to have the same ruthless approach to your content even if it does hurt, but then the stuff that's on the cutting room floor, that turns into social media content, turns into videos, it turns into you know, your social pop posts, whatever it is. But that would be my best advice is to just be ruthless in the how you edit. And it should be painful, but it's it's still going to help people because you're getting them further than they would have been without this content. Oh, love it. Ah, such good advice here today. I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, Terry, I know you, and this leads into my next question. I only have a couple more for you. You live an incredibly busy life. You mentioned you have a family, you have kids, you're a consultant, you're a coach, you're a course creator, uh, you're a businessman, you're building a business. How do you, uh, I, well, can you give us some tips for managing all of that? Because I know how intimidating it is for someone starting out taking their business online to balance all of that. So do you have a couple tips for how you've been able to manage everything? Yeah, I mean, one is having a vision for my life. What mm -hmm. does that look like, right? What does my day-to-day -day look like? How am I known? Uh, what circles I, am I in? So on and so forth. And then reverse engineering the steps you need to get there, right? So for me, my goal, my vision is to create content that helps entrepreneurs save time, make better decisions, and have more time to spend with the people and opportunities that matter most to them. Mm. So that's my focus, right? And then outside of that, it's saying no more often to things that don't align with that goal or would distract me too much from it because of the time commitment. 
And also I have a really good executive assistant who handles a lot of the admin type stuff that I just can't get to or would mess up. So, and this is something I posted about on LinkedIn the other day. Like people say, oh, you should never hire someone until you're making at least $10,000 a month. And I'm like, well, that's why you're not making $10,000 a month. It's because you're spending time formatting Squarespace or like trying to figure out ConvertKit or how to indent a PDF instead of stuff that's going to build your business because only you can do those things. So I have a really great service for that. And my service, I have one main executive assistant, but she manages all these other virtual assistants. So basically anything I need, I can go to her for and she figures it out. So nice. those would be the three things. It's just getting that clarity, getting that help and having that vision. Love it. And uh, two more questions. One real quick. We had a couple people asking, can you repeat the action acronym a little slower? I can because I, I speak quickly, which is a problem, right? Um, <laughs> so the A is for audits. The C is for consulting. The T is for training. The I is for implementation. The O is for ongoing retainers. And the N is for new opportunities. Love it. And uh, Terry, last question I have, where can people learn more about you? Where can they see the courses you're offering or your other services? Where's the best place just to learn more about Terry Rice? Yeah, LinkedIn's where I'm most active. So you can look for me there. And I do have a few cool things coming up. I have a new podcast coming out next month. It's called Launch Your Business. So if you're interested in that, please do check it out. And then Jonah, actually through Teachable, I have another course coming out, which is going to help professional service providers launch their business. Again, with no money, with no extra extra team or anything like that, with the skills you already have. So if you go to my website, you know, list and learn more about that too. But the best spot would be LinkedIn. Love it. Terry, thank you so much for your time. I love talking to you about these things. And it, even just in this half hour, you have been dropping some super valuable knowledge. So for everyone watching, just to cover a little ground, there will be a replay. It'll be emailed to you if you RSVP'd for the event. It'll also be on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that channel if you enjoyed today's event. We're continuing to bring creators like Terry out here and grow your knowledge base, put this actionable resource into real life situations. And also if you don't have a Teachable account, there's a link below, you can start one for free and start playing around with, coursing pro with course products and coaching products, all of these things you need to build your business. Terry, thank you for making time to talk to us all today. It's always a delight to talk to you. And thank you everyone who's here watching live or the replay. It's a blast to have you all here. I hope you have a wonderful day, Terry. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.